Since the earliest days of steam, railway engineers have been locked in a race to build faster, more efficient and more reliable locomotives. Some succeeded brilliantly, others not so much. One of the most ambitious and ultimately doomed efforts was the Paget locomotive, a radical experiment in steam design that was unlike anything seen before or since. The mastermind behind this oddity was Cecil Walter Paget, the works manager of the Midland Railway's Derby Works and son of Midland Railway chairman George Ernest Paget. Backed initially by his own private funds, Cecil sought to revolutionise steam power with an unorthodox design that broke all the rules. Eventually, the cost spiralled out of control and the Midland Railway reluctantly stepped in to fund the remainder. The locomotive, completed in January 1909, was a technical curiosity from the start. It featured a 2 6 2 wheel arrangement, weighed an enormous 122.9 tonnes and was driven by eight single-acting uniflow cylinders, all located inside the locomotive. These were arranged in two banks of four, each bank with its own rotary steam valve. In short, this wasn't just an evolution, it was a revolution. The drive system was astonishingly complex. Two cylinders powered the front axle, four drove the middle, and two more powered the rear. The uniflow system was supposed to be more efficient by allowing steam to flow in only one direction per cylinder. But the reality was far messier. Right from the first trial runs, problems appeared. The cast iron rotary valve casings expanded at a different rate to their bronze liners, causing serious leakage when cold. Though the valves sealed better once warm, this was hardly a practical solution for regular service. Nonetheless, the locomotive is rumoured to have reached 82 miles per hour during one test run, though this was never officially confirmed. Then came the seizure at Toton Yard in 1912, when a rotary valve locked solid, bringing the main line to a grinding halt for seven hours. In a tightly scheduled railway world, that was unforgivable. From that point on, the Paget engine was viewed with suspicion, if not outright contempt. And it wasn't just the unreliability. Later testing revealed that the rotary valve gear consumed 30% more power than conventional D-slide valves. And the complex network of rods, cranks, gears and rotating sleeves? An engineer's nightmare. Even with plentiful oiling points, valve seizures were frequent. Yet, the locomotive wasn't entirely without merit. Its mechanical balancing was superb with almost no hammer blow on the rails, and the ride was exceptionally smooth. In that respect, Paget's ideas were ahead of their time. Another innovation was the firebrick lined firebox, a massive 11 feet 10 and a half inches long, with no water walls on the sides or back. Instead of a conventional brick arch, it featured a fire bridge and the great area was an enormous 55 square feet, the largest in Britain at the time. Two fire doors allowed stokers to feed the massive firebed. Though fire bricks tended to crack or fall out under use, the concept largely worked, unlike many previous attempts at similar designs. Incredibly, only one known photograph of the Paget locomotive exists, released only after 1923, long after the engine had disappeared from the public eye. The Midland Railway had kept the project tightly under wraps, perhaps to avoid embarrassment if it failed. And fail it did. After its final mechanical failure, the locomotive was quietly stored and eventually scrapped in 1918, while Paget was away in France commanding the Royal Engineers Railway Operating Division during World War I. Rumour has it that his critics waited until he was out of the country before finally scrapping his creation. But there's no solid evidence for this. Cecil Paget's engine was many things. Bold, experimental, flawed, misunderstood and ultimately forgotten. But in a world that often punishes risk and rewards conformity, the Paget locomotive stands as a monument to one man's audacious attempt to challenge the status quo of steam engineering. Thanks for watching.
If you enjoyed this dive into one of Britain's strangest and most ambitious locomotives, be sure to like, share and subscribe for more deep dives into railway history's most curious chapters. Got a favourite forgotten locomotive? Let us know in the comments below.